Welcome to Metalacto. Today we are going to discuss absorptions, transportations and the utilizations of the vitamin A and its metabolites. So I hope so you will focus on each point of the absorptions, transportations and the utilization. So let's start. First of all, when someone take diet having the vitamin and that diets move into the stomach. First of all, from the esophagus, the diet enter into the stomach okay and from the stomach it will move downward okay after digestion and it move into the intestine here is the intestine small intestine okay so in the diet you will see vitamin D is actually present in two forms okay in the diet you will see the vitamins present in two forms it can be present in the preform preform vitamins or the proform vitamin here are basically the two forms of the vitamin a preform vitamin a that is actually the retinol okay retinol and the proform vitamin a is the beta carotene okay that is the pro form beta carotene okay so in the diet you will see the presence of the retinol and the beta carotene but just keep one thing in your mind that this is actually the animal source and this is actually the plant source okay so actually retinol is present in the form of the retinyl ester okay that's the most important thing which you have to remember about the retinol. So, retinol is actually present in the retinyl, retinyl esters. Okay. That's the most important thing. Okay. So, first of all, in the intestine, small intestine, you will see the breakdown of the retinyl ester. And it will form two things. Breakdown of the retinyl ester. And it formed the two things. First thing is the free fatty acids. And second thing that is released is the retinol. Now the retinol is actually released from the retinyl ester. So this is it. After that, this retinol will enter into the enterocytes. Here, here are basically the enterocytes cells of the small intestine okay this is the first thing that actually come from the animal source and what about the plant source that are actually present in the beta carotene so beta carotenes directly enters into the enterocytes okay here is the beta carotene and here is the retinol retinol now, up till now we discuss that the uh, enters of the beta carotenes that actually come from the plant directly into the enterocyte. And second thing, first retinyl ester convert into the retinol and after retinol absorb into the enterocytes. Okay, now beta carotene has ability to convert into the retinol. Okay, beta carotene first convert into the, first convert into the two retinal molecule aldehyde form and after that it will convert into the retinol now ultimately both from the animal source and the plant source you will ultimately the final product is the retinol that is the preform okay and we are we have discussed all these retinal retinol in the previous lecture Okay, now this retinol will convert into the again retinyl ester, retinyl esters. Now that's the most important thing. Okay, with the if I add the free fatty acid into the retinol, then it will convert into the retinyl ester. So if I say here is the basically the smiling, this is the retinyl ester. Now, after that, this retinyl ester has to be transported into the liver. 
Now, this retinyl ester has to go into the liver. Now, we are going to discuss the transportations of the retinyl esters from the enterocytes cells of the intestine into the liver. Okay. First of all, this retinyl ester will pack into the chylomicron. Okay. If I say this is the chylomicron. Chylomicrons. Okay. Now, this retinyl ester will pack into the chylomicron. Okay. After that, Chylomicron move into the lymphatic system. Okay. If you see here, this chylomicron carrying the retinyl ester. Okay. This is the entered into the lymphatic system. Lymphatic system. Okay. Now, the lymphatic vessel will ultimately drain into the blood vessels. Okay. Now, after that, the lymphatic vessel enter into the blood stream through subclavian veins. Okay. Now, this chylomicron along with the retinyl ester. Retinyl ester. So, here is the chylomicron. Chylomicron. And along with the retinyl, retinyl ester. The most important thing which you have to remember, all fat soluble vitamins. That is the DACA. DACA, all vitamin, fat soluble vitamin, vitamin D, E, K, A. Transported through the chylomicron. Chylomicrons actually transport the fat soluble vitamins. Okay. And ultimately, this retinyl ester, actually uh, in the bloodstream, you will see the convergence of the chylomicron remnants. And ultimately, this retinyl esters enter into the liver that is the retinyl ester okay here is the retinyl ester now in the liver it will convert into the all trans retinol all trans retinol that's the most important thing okay it's mean that in each double bond of the retinol, you will see the transform. Okay. Now, our trans retinol has three options to go through. It can go towards the tissues of the body. It can store inside the liver and it can go towards the eye. So, it has three major pathways. So, first of all, we will discuss when it go towards the peripheral tissues. So, this R trans retinol from the liver enter into the blood, blood stream. Now, this is the retinol. This is the retinol. In the blood stream, it will bind to the retinol binding protein. Okay, that's the most important thing. This retinol will bind to the retinol binding proteins. Okay, now, here is the attachment of the retinol with the retinol binding protein. Okay. And along with these two compounds, you also see the attachment of the transthyretin. Transthyretin. Now, here is the complex of three molecules. Retinol, that is our main focus. Retinol. Retinol bind to the retinol binding protein. That is actually the protein that is actually present in the blood stream. And this retinol binding protein also attached with the trans thyretin. Okay. They move toward the tissues of the body. Okay. That's the most important thing. And when they reach to the tissues of the bodies, then ultimately retinol will bind to the receptors of the tissues and the product retinol binding proteins and the trans thyretin will release. Okay retinol binding proteins and the trans thyretin trans thyretin will release okay ultimately after that retinol that has attached to the receptors of the tissues will enters into the cell 
ओके दैट इज दॉल नाउ द रेटी नॉल हैज बीन एंटर्स इन टू दिश्यूज ओके सो इन दिश्यूज यू विल सी द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग हेयर इज बेसिकली दी सेल्स ऑफ द टिश्यूज सो हेयर इज द न्यूक्लियस दिस इज द न्यूक्लियस एंड आउटर मोस्ट विल बी दाइटोप्लाजम ओके नाउ दिस रेटिनॉल हैज टू बी ट्रांसपोर्टेड इन साइड द न्यूक्लियस दिस रेटिनॉल विल एंटर और कन्वर्ट इन टू द रेटिनॉइक एसिड रेटिनॉइक एसिड ओके दैट इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इन द साइटोप्लाजम दिस रेटिनॉइक एसिड will enters into the nucleus okay in the nucleus you will see the dna here is the dna that is actually present in the nucleus okay so now this retinoic acid retinoic acid enter into the nucleus after that this retinoic acid will attach to the receptor and that is the retinoic acid receptor retinoic acid receptor okay now there is a complex that is retinoic acid that will attach to the receptor retinoic acid receptor basically these receptors are the nuclear receptor or you can say transcriptional regulation because this process this is actually the same process that actually happened for the steroids hormones thyroid hormone and the vitamin d so that's the most important process after that this complex here is the complex retinoic acid and the retinoic acid receptor will go towards the dna and will attach to the specific gene that is the okay that's the most important thing retinoic acid and the retinoic acid receptor it will attach to the gene and regulate the transcription and the translation as we know that in the transcription you will see the synthesis of the messenger rna from the dna messenger rna and after that you will see the formations of the different proteins that actually regulate the whole process of the differentiation in the epithelial cells so that's the most important thing it's mean that vitamin a that is actually present in the retinol retinoic acid the ultimate our main focus is in the formations of the proteins that actually regulate the different process especially in the epithelial tissues so that is the one pathway second pathway of the r trans retinol it can convert into the retinyl ester retinyl ester that's the most important thing or you can say retinyl palmitate so because it is actually the storage form of the vitamin this is actually the storage form of the vitamin a retinyl ester okay after that again r trans r trans retinol has another pathway now if you see here this r trans retinol again enter into the blood stream that is the retinol okay now again that's the same process this retinol will bind to the retinol binding protein along with the trans thyretin trans thyretin ultimately when they enters into the eye specifically what types of the cells rods and the cone cells of the retina that is actually present in the eye so ultimately when they reach toward the eye only the retinol will enter into the rods and the cone cell we will first focus on the rod cells okay so and after that you see that the retinol binding proteins and the trans thyretin will remain inside the blood stream okay only the all trans retinol will enter now you see that all trans retinol okay has been entered into the rod cells okay of the retina 
so after that all trans retinol will convert into the here is the process of the conversion that is 11 cis retinol that's the most important thing all trans retinol will convert into the 11 cis retinol and after that 11 cis retinol will convert into the 11 cis retinal retinal that's the most important thing that is the aldehyde form aldehyde form of the vitamin a is actually most important in the reproductions and the visual cycle okay after that this 11 cis retinal will bind to the proteins that is actually present in both roads and the corn cell that is the opsin opsin when the 11 cis retinal bind to the opsin then ultimately you will see the formations of the rhodopsin rhodopsin that's the most important pigment required in the vn in dim light so actually that is required in dim light rhodopsin that is mostly present in the rod cells because rod cell is actually important in the dim light okay rod cell related to the dim and the corn cell related to the bright light okay so formation of the rhodopsin uh, 11 cis retinal combined with the opsin that will form the rhodopsin when the light entered okay due to the light the rhodopsin break down into the uh, all trans retinal okay and along with the release of the opsin that's the most important thing release of the opsin and the r trans retinal okay and after that when the when the persons comes in light then this rod opsin break and form the r trans retinal and the opsin when that person comes again into the dim light then what will happen we have required rhodopsin now what will happen this r trans retinal will again convert into the r trans retinol and 11 cis retinol 11 cis retinin and ultimately you will see the formations of the rhodopsin and ultimately after that that person will be able to visualize in the dim light but it takes some time when someone comes from the bright light to the dim light it requires some times to be utilized in the dim light so that's the most important thing if there is a deficiency of the vitamin a then what will happen there is no 11 cis retinal when there is no 11 cis retinal there is no formations of the rhodopsin so that's why that person will not be able to see in the dim light and that condition is actually called the night blindness night blindness or you can say nictalopia that is actually the condition night blindness that person will not be able to see in the dim light so here are basically the different functions first is the uh, you see the vitamin A is very much important in the visual cycle okay this is the first function second function is the maintenance of the epithelial okay that is the epithelial cells okay that's otherwise if you see the deficiency of the vitamin A, you will see the keratinization or the dryness of the epithelial. Okay, that's the most important thing. And vitamin is vitamin A is actually required in the reproductions as well. But the two forms of the vitamin, retinol and the retinal. Retinoic acid is not important in the visual and the reproductive cycle. That's the most important thing. So this is all about the absorption distributions and the utilizations of the vitamin a if you still have any question you may ask in the comment section thank you so much